it wasn't very often that I could get Mama to talk about herself or her life in the old country or what she felt about things. You had to catch her unawares or when she had nothing to do, which was very, very seldom. I do remember one occasion, however. It was the day before Dagmar was to come home from the hospital and Mama suggested treating me to an ice cream soda. She had never done such a thing before and I remember how proud it made me feel just to sit and talk with her like a real grown-up person. It was kind of a special treat moment in my life that I will always remember, quite apart from the ice cream soda, which was wonderful. Catherine, you like me go next door to have ice cream soda? Oh, Mama, do you mean it? We celebrate. We celebrate that Dagmar's Bell is coming home again. What do you want, Catherine? I think it's chocolate. No, no, a strawberry. No, a chocolate ice cream soda. You are sure? Yes. But, Mama, can we afford it? I think this month we can afford it. What's it going to be, ladies? A chocolate ice cream soda and a cup of coffee, please. Mama, he called us late. Why are you having soda, too? Better I like coffee. Coffee really nicer than a soda? When you are grown up, it is. When can I drink coffee? When you are grown up. When I get tea? Maybe before that. When I graduate? Maybe. Comes the time you are grown up, Papa, and I will know. Do you still like sodas better than coffee? When you were a little girl? There was not soda when I was a little girl. It was an old country. You mean they don't have sodas in Norway? Now maybe. Now I think they have many things from America. But not when I was a little girl. There are oats. Mama, do you ever want to go back to the old country? I like to go back once, baby, to look. I like to see the mountains and the fjords. Maybe some summer, when Dagmar is big, I take you out there to look, like tourists. But it's how it would be now. I would be tourist. Is no one left who would remember me. I like to see the little house where Papa and I grow up. And something else I like to look at. What is it, Mama? What would you look at? Catherine, you do not know you have brother besides Nils? No! A real brother in Norway? He is my first baby. I am 18 when he is born. Where is he now? He is dead. Oh. Oh, I thought you meant a real brother. A long lost one, like in stories. When did he die? When he is two years old. It's his grave I would like to look at. It's good. Your ice cream soda? Yes, Mama. Mama, have you had a very hard life? Hard? No. No life is easy all of the time. It's not meant to be. But, but rich people. Aren't rich people's lives easy? I don't know, Catherine. I have never known rich people. But I see them sometimes on the streets and in the stores. It does not look as if it were easy. Would you like to be rich? I like to be rich in the way I like to be 10 feet high. It's good for some things, it's not so good for others. But didn't you come to America to get rich? No. We come to America because all the others are here. It's good for family to be together. And did you like it right away? Right away. We get off the ferry and I see San Francisco and I say, it's good. It's like Norway, only it's better than Norway. And then you are all born here and I become American citizen. But not to get rich. Well, I want to be rich. Rich in things. When I'm rich, I'll buy you your warm coat. When are you going to get that warm coat, Mama? Soon now. After we pay doctor bills and after Hyde pays his rent. I think soon I must ask him. I ask him tomorrow after Dagmar come home. When I'm rich, I'll buy you beautiful clothes. White satin gowns with long trains to them. And jewelry. I'll buy you pearl necklace. 
We talk too much. Come, finish your soda. How much it is, please? Fifteen cents. Here. Here are two lines. You keep the nickel. Buzz food coin. Tomorrow, when Dagmar comes home, you make sure Uncle Elizabeth is there. She was asking for him again this afternoon. You keep Uncle Elizabeth in the house tonight. Yes, Mom. But wait, wait, Dagmar. I must tell you something. Uncle Elizabeth is sick. Sick? What's the matter with him? He, he has been in fight. He come home last night very sick. Nils, Nils has been doctoring him. What do you think? He's pretty bad, Mama. I've dressed all his wounds up in boric acid again. I wouldn't go in there right now, baby. I've got to. He's my cat. I haven't seen him in a whole month. More. What should we do, Nils? I think we should have gotten rid of him before she got home. But she would have been so unhappy if he was not here at all. She'll be unhappier still if he dies. Oh, Mama, what happened? What happened? I tried to pick him up, and his bed had slipped over his eye, and it was bleeding. Oh. He looks like that all over. Nils, you go see to his eye again. Dagmar, ye Ben, would it not be better for the poor thing to go to sleep quietly? You mean, go to sleep and never wake up again? No. I think it died by itself. And I'll try to make him well, but I do not think he can. Mama can. Mama can do everything. Try to make it well again, Mama. Please. We see how he get through the night. Now, Dagmar, you must go to sleep. Go, I bring you supper. But will you try? I promise I try. Mama, it's just cruelty keeping that cat alive. I know. You say we see how the cat gets through the night. I ask you, how do we get through the night? It's no use. We must put the cat to sleep. Now, as you go to the drugstore and get something, some chloroform, maybe. How much shall I get? You ask the man. You tell him it is for the cat. He knows. It's best. It's the only thing. I know, but it's such a sad homecoming for her. And she was so good in hospital. Never once she cried. I get her supper. And I put that cat outside where she can't hear him. You out, Mr. Hyde? Oh, Mr. Hanson, I did not see you. And I know you're back. Oh, as a matter of fact, I was just about to give you this letter. The fact is, uh, I've been called away. So, a uh, letter I received this morning necessitates my departure, my immediate departure. I am sorry. Mama, Mr. Hyde says he goes away. It's true. Oh, alas, dear madam, yes. Tis true, tis pity. And pity tis, tis true. You will find here my check for all that I owe you, and a note expressing my most profound thanks for your most kind hospitality. You uh, will say goodbye to the children for me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Madam, my deepest gratitude. And sir, my sincerest admiration. And that's been a privilege. Ave ad kebabe. Hail and farewell. Was wonderful man. It's too bad. 
How much is the check for? Hundred ten dollar. Good. He's four months. Good. Now we pay doctor everything. And you buy your warm coat. It's fur now, baby. But there will be no more reading. You take the check, Lars. You get the money. Yeah, I get it. What does he say in his letter? You read it while I fix Dagmar Topper. Dear friends, I find myself compelled to take a somewhat hasty departure from this house of happiness. It's beautiful letter. I am leaving you my library for the children. He leaves his books? He says so. Oh, Lars, go. Go see if it is true. See if they are in his room. Nels, I'm sure it was him. Getting on the streetcar, carrying his suitcase. I'm sure he's going away. Well, at least I hope he paid him out. Mama, I just saw Mr. Hyde getting on the streetcar. Yeah, he leave. Well, did he pay you? Yeah, he paid. $110. Gee! Are you going to put it in the bank? We need it right away. Mr. Hyde leave his books for you, too. Say, the Pickwick Papers, the complete Shakespeare. Alice in Wonderland, Ivanhoe. The last of the Mohicans, the Hamlet. We were right in the middle of that. Nils can finish. He has fine voice. Like Mr. Hyde. Christina, you take the jelly back into the cooler. I bring Dagmar her supper. Nils, you get it? Oh, yes. Good. You put it on the table. We do it when I get back. You know how? No, I, I thought that. You did not ask? No, I thought that Papa did. Papa, you know? No, I do not know, but it cannot be difficult if you hold the cat. But... And watch it die? No. I think better you get some rags and a big sponge to soak up the chloroform. You put it in the box with him and cover him over. You get it ready outside. I bring some blankets. Oh, so much goes on. Christina, you see who is at door? St. Jenny, Yeti. Not the large, has he gone? Who? Your boarder, Mr. Hart. Yeah, he's gone. Did he pay you? Yeah, he paid. Ha! A check. Lars has it right there. A check? Yenny, what is... Christine, you take the market supper. I come up in a minute. Yenny, what is... How you know Mr. Hyde is gone? Well, I was at Mr. Gruber's down the street. You know the restaurant and bakery? And he told me that he saw Mr. Hyde there today having lunch. And before he left, he asked Mr. Gruber to cash a check for him for $50. Well, go on. Well, your Mr. Hyde didn't expect Mr. Gruber to take it to the bank until tomorrow. But he did. And what do you think? Mr. Hyde hasn't even an account at the bank. I don't understand. You mean the check is no good? No good at all. Your Mr. Hyde was a crook, just as I always thought he was for all his reading and fine ways. Mr. Gruber says he's been cashing checks all over the neighborhood. How much did he owe you? Plenty, I'll bet. Hey, Martha, I said, how much did he owe you? Nothing. He owed us nothing at all. How much was the check for? It does not matter, Yenny. He paid with better things than money. I told you right from the beginning you shouldn't trust him, but you were so sure, just like you always are. Mr. Hyde was a gentleman. A gentleman. I bet it was a hundred dollars he rooked you of. Yanny, maybe you do not have more important things to do, but I have. What? What have you got to do that's so important? I have to throw up on the cat! The cat died by itself. No, we cannot tell her lies. What a funny, funny smell. Good morning, my darling. 
My darling Elizabeth. Goodness, you put enough blankets on him. Do you oh. think he'd catch cold? Oh, Dagmar, don't! Dagmar, let me see that cat! He's well! Oh, Mama, I knew you could fix him. But, Dagmar, I didn't. I... I'm going to take him and show him up to Nels right away. Nels! Nels Elizabeth is well again! His miracle. You cannot have to use enough chloroform. You just give him good sleep, and that cures him. We rechristened the cat. Lazarus. But Lars, it's not good for her to grow up thinking I can fix everything. It's the best thing in the world for her to believe. Besides, I know exactly how she feels. Oh, we finished getting the breakfast things. After that. I don't know and I don't care. Chris! I don't! It's all I've heard for weeks. The school play and your graduation and going on to high school. Not even a thought of what's going on at home. What do you mean? See? You don't even know. You mean the strike? Yes, I mean the strike. Papa's been out of work for four whole weeks and a lot you care. Well, I bet you don't even know what they're striking for, do you? All you and your friends can talk about is the presents you're going to get. You make me ashamed of being a girl. Fiber Walsh's family is going to add seven pearls to the necklace that they used out of her when she was a baby. Oh, hello, Katrin. Did you hear about the Fiber's graduation present? Yes. Yes, I heard. Well, I'm getting an onyx ring with a diamond in it. A real diamond? diamond? Yes, of course. A small one. What are you getting? Well, well, they haven't actually told me yet, but I think I'm getting that dresser set in your father's drugstore. Oh, you mean that one in the window? Yes. It's got a mirror and a brush and a jewelry box. And it's actual gold. I wanted Father to give it to me out of stock, but he said it was too expensive. Father's an awful tightwad. They're giving me a bangle. Oh, <laughs> there's the streetcar. We've got to fly. Goodbye, Catcher. Goodbye, Christine. See you tomorrow. Come on, Dorothy. Who said you were going to get the dresser set anyway? Well, no one actually said so, but I sort of Well, you're not it. going to get it. How do you know? Because I know what you are getting. I heard Mama talking to Aunt Jenny about it, and Aunt Jenny said you were too young to appreciate it. What is it? Mama's giving you her brooch, her soyer. You mean that old thing she wears that belonged to Grandmother? Why would I want something like that? It's an heirloom. Mama thinks a lot of it. Well, then she ought to keep it. You... you can't mean that that's all they're giving me. What more do you want? I want the dresser set! My goodness, if Mama doesn't realize what a suitable present... It's practically the most important time in a girl's life when she graduates. And you say you're not selfish. It's not selfishness. Well, I don't know what else you'd call it. With Papa out of work, we need every penny we can lay our hands on. Even the little bank's empty. But I'm sure you'll devil Mama to giving you to that dresser set somehow. Why talk about it? I'm going home. Christine was right. I got the dresser set. They gave it to me just before supper on graduation night. Papa could not attend the exercises because there was a strike meeting to determine about going back to work. I was so excited that I could hardly eat. And the present took the remnants of my appetite clean away. I'll put the dishes in the pantry, Mama. We'll wash them when we come home. 
Who wants coffee sugar? Oh, take mine. Tatrin? Tatrin, you get your coat. You will need it. Aunt Jenny says if we drink coffee, like we do at your age, it'll turn our complexions dark. I'd like to be Black Norwegian. Can I, Papa? I like you better this way, like Mom. When can we get old enough for our complexions not to turn dark? When can we drink coffee? One day when you are grown up. That must be Yanni and Trina. It's good, we can start now. Is everybody ready? Is Catherine very excited? She ate no supper. Lars, was that coffee you dipped that sugar in? Lars, you know you shouldn't do that. It'll... Turn their complexion start. I know. It won't hurt. Oh, Lars. And Jenny, did you see my graduation present? Look, it's got a jewelry box. What? But I thought you were going to... No. No, you were right, Jenny. She wants something more... more modern. Well... Well, it's very pretty. You're not wearing your soyer. No, no, I do not wear it tonight. Come on, Trina, we are going to be late. Oh, but Peter is not here yet. Catherine has her costume to put on. Peter can follow. Or you like to wait for Peter. Lars does not have to go yet. You can wait with him. I hope Catherine knows her lines. Sure, she knows them. I know them, too. It's too bad you can see Catherine debut as an actress. Lars, you will be home before us. I think the meeting will not last long. It's good. We go now. You like to play a game of checkers before you go? Well, I haven't played checkers in years. Then I beat you. Goodbye, father. Goodbye, daughter. I think of you. I will see you later, Aunt Trina. Glad. your cheap trash with you to show off. It's not cheap trash. It's beautiful. You're just jealous. I told you, you devil mom, into giving that to you. I didn't devil her at all. I just showed it to her in Mr. Schiller's window and, and made her go and sell her brooch that her very own mother gave to her. What? Christine, you weren't supposed to tell that. I don't care. I think she ought to know. Nels, Nels, I, it's not true, is it? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, she did. Now, come on. No, no, I don't believe you. I'm going to ask Papa. You haven't got any time. I don't care. Papa? Papa, Christina says, Papa, did Mama sell her brooch to give me this? Christina should not have told you that. Then it's true. No, she did not sell it. She traded it to Mr. Sherlock for your present. Oh, oh, but I never meant for her to do that. It was... Look, no. Catherine, you wanted the present. Mama wanted your happiness. She wanted it even more than she wanted the brooch. I never meant for her to do that. It was all she had of grandmother's. She always meant it for you, Catherine. You must not cry. You have your play to act. I don't want to act now. But you must. Your audience is waiting. I don't care. But you must. Tonight you're not Catherine any longer. You are an actress, and an actress must act whatever she is feeling. There is a saying. The man, the man must go through. No, no. The show must go on. So go out and act your play. We will talk of this later, afterwards. Yes, Papa. Now we play it. Father for. 
Tell them that I need to speak to him and not to me. Tell them it's important, very important. Oh, is that the dresser set? Can I look at it in a minute? No, you're not to touch it. Why? What's the matter? I only want to look at it. Well, you can't. Dorothy, put this someplace where I can't see it. Go on, go on, take it. Take it, take it. about her life. When it is over, I see her talking to Mr. Schiller, and then she goes to take off her costume. Mills says he will bring her home, but it is a long time ago and it is late for her to be out. And in the play, Lars, she was not good. I have seen her act it here, and yes, she was good. But tonight, no. It was as if, as if something else was bothering her the whole time. I think maybe there was. But what? What can be burying her? Tonight, after you leave, Catherine found out about your brooch. My brooch? How? Christina told her. Why? I do not know. Christina! Christina! Were you calling me, Mama? Yes, Christina. Did you tell Catherine tonight about my brooch? Yes. But why? Because I hated the smug way she was acting about that dresser set. Is no excuse. You make her unhappy. You make her not good in play. But she made you unhappy. Giving up your brooch for her selfishness is not for you to judge. I choose to give up my brooch. And you know I do not want you to tell. I am angry with you, Christina. Oh, I'm sorry. But I'm not sorry I told. Christina is the stubborn one. What happened at the meeting tonight, Papa? We go back to work tomorrow. Gee, that's Polly, isn't it, Mama? Yeah, it's good. Mama? Mama, here's your brooch. I'm sorry I was so bad in the play. I'll, I'll go help Christine with the dishes. Mr. Schiller, give it back to her. He didn't want to. We went to his house to get it. He said he was going to give it to his wife for a birthday present. But Catherine begged and begged him. She even offered to work for him on his, her vacation if he'd give it back. What so, did Mr. Schiller say? He said that that wasn't necessary, but he gave her a job all the same. She's going to work for him afternoons for $3 a week. And the dresser said she gave that back? She didn't want to. She was awful upset. It's a hard thing for her to do. She's a good kid, really she is. I'm going to say my good night, so I've got to wake up early. Good night, Nels. Good night, Papa. Good night, Nels. Nels is the kind one. Catherine. <coughs> yes, Mama? Come here. I want you should put this up. No, Mama, it's yours. It's your graduation present. Oh, Mama. I'll wear it forever. I'll keep it always. Christina should not have told you. I'm glad she did. Now. And I am glad too, Catherine. I'm sorry, Papa, but I don't feel like it. Clark, what do you want? For me? For our grown-up daughter. Oh. Catherine is the dramatic one. It's too bad. Her first cup of coffee and she does not drink it. It would not have been so good for her this late at night. And you, Marta, you are the practical one. You drink the coffee, Lars. We do not want to waste it.
Peter. Yes. Peter, you know I, you know I do. Good, goodbye, Peter. What was that all about? Peter says we shouldn't hear any longer to wait for Uncle Chris. He said we should send the wedding invitation right away. He was quite insistent on that. But I can be very masterful when he's alone with me. That's very nice. I don't know about these flowers. San Francisco. Who sent the telegram? I don't know. Was it that that woman? I don't know, Yanni. I think maybe. I won't go. It's Martha. She sent it Uncle Chris is dying. How come the telegram was sent to you? I'm the eldest. Yanni, it's not time to think of who is eldest. Uncle Chris is dying. I don't believe it. He's too mean to die. Never. I'm not going. Well, I don't have time to argue with you. The train leaves at 11 o'clock. It's four hours to get there. You tell Sigrid? Sigrid is here now. Good, you tell her. Where about that you said he was? Yukaya. Yukaya. I'm not going. That you decide. Uncle Chris, sorry. The wages of sin. He's old. Maybe, maybe it's time for him to go. Four hours by train, and then maybe have to stay all night. All that expense to watch a wicked old man die. I know, but that is his bill. Huh. Even if there was anything to leave, we know who he would leave it to. Yeah, but all the same, oh, Chris is dying now, and blood is thicker than vodka, especially when it's Norwegian. I'm going to take my auntie with me. Uncle Chris is always so fond of children. I agree with Sigrid. I think we should go. Well, you can't go. <coughs> Why not? Because of that wife of his. You can't meet a common, low class woman like that. We've never even spoken to her. Why not? If you two can. For married women. Well, I'm engaged. It's not the same thing. Not the same thing at all. <sighs> Nonsense. I'd just like to see her once. Besides, if he's going to change his will, there is still my diary, remember? Do you see? Do you think we should take better with us? Hate the turtles and whatever for. Well, after all, I mean, yes, profession. Trina, you always were fool. Everyone knows the last person that I met wants to see is the undertaker. <laughs> When Mama said I was to go with her, I was excited and I was frightened. It was exciting to take sandwiches on the train, almost as though we were going on a picnic. But I was frightened at the thought of seeing death, though I told myself that if I was going to be an author, I had to experience everything. All the same, I hoped it would all be over when we got there. We arrived at the station in the afternoon and when we asked the station manager for the Halverson Ranch, it appeared to me he looked at us strangely. Obviously, Uncle Chris was considered an odd character. The ranch was about three miles out of town, 
a derelict, rambling old place with tall trees and long grass and the smell of honeysuckle. We made quite a cavalcade walking up to the front gate. The woman, as the ants called her, came out to the steps to meet us. How is he? Is he? Come in, won't you?
I do not need you to feed it to me. I can drink myself. Give Martha her glass. So, so. Scott, Scott. These nuts are awful. I'm simply being eaten alive. Nets always worse on sunset. I can't believe I let you talk me into coming here. To be insulted like that and then thrown out of his room and then expected to sit here hour after hour without even as much as a cup of coffee. I'd make coffee if I knew where the kitchen was. In her kitchen, it would poison me. I'm leaving. Trina, are you coming? Oh, well, we ought to be up to wait a little longer. After all, I mean, you can hurry those things. And all your talk about the will. A lot of chance we got to say a word. Oh, maybe, maybe Marta has been talking to him. Well? Uncle Chris is gone. Did he say anything about the will? There is no money. Little money there is goes to Yessi. Yes, Yessi, his wife, was good wife to him. Look, here is something Uncle Chris give me. What is that? His account of how he spends money. What we care as long as there is no money left. Yenny! Listen, you know how Uncle Chris was lame, how he always walked with a limp. Well, it was his one thought, lame people. He liked to be doctor to help them. Instead, he helped them in other ways. Listen, I read to you the last page. Joseph Spinelli, four years old, tubercular left leg, $337.18. Box now. Easter Jensen, nine years old, $217.15. Box now. Annie Sulfeld. My Annie? 12 years old, fractured kneecap, $442.16. Mother, mother, when do we eat? What is it? Is Uncle Chris? It does not say the end for Annie. I like to write walks now. Yeah. Maybe even runs. Is all. Is finished. It was good. I go make some coffee. You can go in and see him now if you'd like. Moving down to the hotel for tonight, so that you can all stay. Wait. Where will you go after he is buried? Where will you live? I'll find a room somewhere. I'll probably go back to nursing. You like to come back to San Francisco? You can stay with us. We have room, plenty room. That's very kind of you, but I like to have you. You come for a little as our guest, and then when you find work, you can be our boarder. I don't know why you should bother. You were a good wife to Uncle Chris. Catherine, I like you come see him now. See him? You mean he's... I like you to see him. That way you never be frightened of death. Will you come with me? Yeah. about you. Oh, look, he's asleep. 
Trina, do you know what next Thursday is? Well, I'm just asleep. What would you think about giving a little party? The party? Oh, quite a modest one. Nothing showy or ostentatious. But after all, we haven't married a year with the baby coming so soon and you being in mourning. We haven't been able to entertain. I think it's time you took your place in society. What, what sort of party? An evening party. A soiree. I should say about 10 people. Some of the old Norwegian colony, Lars, Martha. And Yenny and Sigrid? Oh, I haven't thought of inviting Yenny and Sigrid. Oh, but we would have to. We, we could have let them out. Trina, I hope you won't be offended by my saying that I have never felt altogether comfortable with Yang and Sigrid. They have always made me feel that I wasn't worthy of you. I know I'm not, but one doesn't like to be reminded of it all the time. Peter! You are all right, though. We must invite them. As for a matter of refreshment, what would you suggest? I... I don't know. What would you say about, um... ice cream and, and cookies for the ladies? Coffee, of course, and port wine for the gentlemen. Port wine? Oh, just a little. You could, you could bring them out and you put all these little glasses. Here's your paper. Is there any news? No. Oh, I almost forgot. A letter for Katrin. Katrin! Katrin, there's a letter for you! Coming! Yes, who it's from? Uh, I don't know. It looks like it's in her own handwriting. It's bad. She get too many like these. I think their letters come back from publisher. I'll go see if I have any puppies yet. Mama, I've just decided something. But if Nels is going to be a doctor, I'm going to be a vet veterinarian. And what is that? It's a doctor for animals. It's good. There are far more humans in the world, or animals in the world, than there are humans. And far more human doctors than animal ones. It just isn't fair. I suppose we couldn't have a horse, could we? <laughs> no, I was afraid we couldn't. Where's the letter? Here. Mama, Papa, I've got something to say. What is it? I'm not going to college. And why is that? Because it would be just a waste of time and money. The only point in my going to college was to be a writer. Well, I'm not going to be one, so you might as well not have it. Is your letter that make you say this 
Is story come back again? Again is right. This is the tenth time. I made this one a test. It's the best I've ever written or ever shall write. I know that. Well, it's no good. What is story about? Well, it's about a painter who's a genius and he's blind. Sounds like the light that failed. Well, what's wrong with that? Oh, nothing, nothing. Anyway, it's not like that at all. My painter, he has an operation and he gets his sight back and he can see again and he paints better than ever. It's good. No, it's not. It's rotten, but it's the best I can do. You have asked your teacher about the Teachers don't know anything about writing. They just know about literature. Maybe if there was someone we could ask. Ask to see if your stories are good or not. Yes, well, there isn't, and they're not. There is something here in the paper about a lady writer. Who? A lady called Florence Dana Moorhead. It gives her picture. You have heard of her? Yes, of course, everyone has. She's terribly successful. She's here on a lecture tour. But she say a secret. You read it, Catherine. Florence Dana Moorhead, celebrated novelist and short story writer. Blah, 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 blah. Interviewed at her suite at the Fairmont. Blah, blah, blah. Announces sincerity the key to literary success. A lot of good that does. Maybe if this lady would read your stories, maybe she could tell you what is wrong with that. Don't be silly, Mama. Why is silly? Well, in the first place, she's a celebrity. She wouldn't have time for that. And in the second, you seem to think writing, well, you seem to think writing's like cooking, that all you need is the right recipe and everything will turn out fine. Well, it isn't. You have to have the gift. You have to have gift for cooking, too. But sometimes, when you have the gift, are things you can learn. That's just the point. I haven't. So if you're finished with the morning paper, Papa, I'll take the want ad section and see if I can find myself a job. What do you think, Nels? Well, I don't know. Her writings seem all right to me, but I just don't know. Would be good to know. What else does Lady say? Uh, let's see. Not much else. The rest is about her in her hometown. Apart from literature, Miss Moorhead's main interest in life is gastronomy. The stars. No food. A brilliant cook herself, she says she would as soon turn out a souffle as she would a short story and find a new recipe as she would a first edition. Let me see picture. Is kind face. What is first edition? Norwegian dishes. 
Ludwig Kölbüller, you know Kölbüller? He's meat butt with cream sauce. And yes, I know, I've eaten them in Christiana. I have good recipe for Kölbüller. It's my mother's recipe. My mother is the best cook I ever meet. I never give this recipe to anyone, not even my own sisters, because they are not good cooks. Oh? But if you talk to me, I give it to you. I promise it's good recipe. Well, that seems fair. Let's sit down. Now, your daughter wants to write this book. How old is she? She is 18, just. Well, does she write? Or does she just want to write? Oh, she writes all the time. Maybe it's not good for her to be author, but it's hard to give up something that means so much. Oh, I agree, but... I bring 12 of your stories. Well, but... To know if someone is good to cook, you do not have to eat whole dinner. You're Maybe right. if you just read one. You're very persuasive. How is it your daughter did not come herself? She was too unhappy and too scared because you are a celebrity. But I see your picture in paper. Oh, that frightful picture. Is picture of a woman who likes to eat food. It certainly is. Mm -hmm. Now, tell me about the cod roller. Is meatballs boiled in stock, not butter. That is one of secrets. Ah! And the cream sauce is half sour cream added to the last. Well, that sounds marvelous. You must grind the meat six times. I could write it down for you. And while I write, you could read. All right, you win. Come upstairs to my apartment. Maybe if you read two stories, I give you recipe for Ludwig. You know Ludwig? He's like... sitting in my, in my attic, writing in my journal. It was very rare that Mama came to the attic thinking that a writer needed her privacy. And I was very surprised to see her standing in the doorway. Mama! Captain, I come in for a moment. Yes, of course. Please sit down. You are writing? No, Mama. I told you that was all over. That is what I want to talk to you about, Catherine. I was going to tear up all my stories this afternoon, only I couldn't find half of them. They are here. Did you take them? Why? I went to see Miss Moorhead. Who's Miss Moore? Mama, you don't mean Florence Dana Moorhead. You don't mean you took her my stories? She read five of them. I am two hours with her. We have a glass of sherry. We have two glasses of sherry. Well, what did she say about them? She said they are not good. Well, I knew that. It was hardly worth her going to all that trouble. She say more, Catherine. Will you listen? Yes. She I'm... say you write now only because of what you have read in other stories. That no one can write good until they feel what they write about. She say for years she writes bad story about people in olden times until she think of something that happened in her own hometown, something only she could know and understand. And she feels she must tell it. And that is how she writes first good story. That's what my teachers tell me to write about. Maybe your teachers are right. I do not know if I explain good what Miss Moorhead say, but while I am with her, I think I understand. Your story about the painter who is blind. Forgive me, Catherine, if my speak is plain. But that is important to you because you are dramatic, one as Papa says. But never you think how it would really be to be painter and blind. Is true? Yes. Yes, I guess it's true. But she say you are to go on writing, that you have the gift, and that when you write something that is real and true, you are to send it to a person whose name she give me, is her agent, and say she recommend you. Here. Oh, oh no, that is recipe for goulash as her grandmother made it. Here. It helps, Catherine, but I tell you. Yes, Mama. But what have I got to write about? I haven't seen anything or been anywhere. Could you write about San Francisco? It's a fine city. Yes, 
Yes, it is, but, but you have to have a main character or something. She writes about her grandfather. He was a wonderful old man. You could write about Papa. Papa? Papa is fine man, is wonderful man. Yes, Mama, but... I have to make supper. Papa be home soon. I like you write about Papa. Yes. Yes, Papa. What has he ever done? What has any of us ever done? Except always being poor and always having illness. Like the time when Dagmar went to the hospital and we... Oh, oh. And that's how it was born. The story of Mama and the hospital. I wrote it quite soon after that. It was the first of many stories. I didn't tell anyone about it, and I sent it to Miss Moorhead's agent. It was a long time before I heard anything. And then one day, I received a letter in the mail. And I went running into the kitchen, shouting, Mama, Mama, I saw the story. A story? Yes, I've got it here with a letter from the publisher and, and a check for $500. No kidding. It's true. Oh, oh, Mama. What do you do if it's $500? I don't know. I'll buy you your warm coat, that's for sure. The coats don't cost $500. I know. We'll put the rest in the bank. Will you, Mama? Will you take it to the bank tomorrow? What is it? Ah, I, I don't know how. We'll just give it to the man and tell him to put it in your account like you always do. You tell them now. Tell us what? Is no bank account. Never in my life I have been inside the bank. But Mama, you always told you us. You always said that. I know. I tell a lie. But, but Mama, why? Is not good for little ones to be afraid, to not feel secure. But now, with $500, I feel I can tell. Oh, Mama. Catherine. <laughs> you have a story? Well, yes. You read it. Now? Yes. No, no, wait. I get to take my. Dagmar, what is it? Come out here, I want you. No, no, leave the rabbit. What is called the story? It's called Mama and the Hospital. You write about Mama? Yes. But, but I thought I told you that I know you. I know you. But that's just the way it came out. You're calling me? Yes. Catherine writes story. She sent it to a magazine for $500. Wow. Take my no. You come, you sit, you listen. You are ready? Yes, Mama. Then read. For as long as I can remember, the house on Steiner Street had been a home. Papa and Mama had both been born in Norway, but they moved to San Francisco because Mama's sisters were here. All of us were born here. Nels, the oldest and the only boy. My sister, Christine, and the littlest sister, Dagmar. Am I in story? Hush, Dagmar, we're all in story. But first and foremost, I remember Mama. I remember that every Saturday night, Mama would sit down by the kitchen table and count out the money Papa had brought home in the little envelope. 